So the science of wear is advancing rapidly, and so is ArcGIS, fueled by innovations in data, in computing, and by GIS innovation itself. ArcGIS itself is part of the Esri Geospatial Cloud. The Esri Geospatial Cloud, it includes distinct product offerings that really work well together uh, as a whole. So it includes our offerings for mapping and location. You've been seeing that all morning. It includes GIS. And both of these for organizations as well as developers. And it includes all of the capabilities of GIS uh, that you see here. And in addition, it includes focused geo-enabled systems uh, that are not GIS to their users, but that work with the organization's GIS. For organizations, the Esri Geospatial Cloud also includes role-based licensing uh, based on user types. And it's available as SaaS or as software. And for developers, it's a platform to build on, uh, as you've been seeing. So mapping and location enablement, this is a core part of GIS and of the Esri Geospatial Cloud. You've been seeing it, and it includes all of these aspects, rich base maps, content, smart mapping for data-driven visualization, the hosting of your data and the management of it, like you saw, uh, story maps and dashboards, the ability to build compelling applications and experiences and share and collaborate with others, ArcGIS Online is our mapping and location platform that embodies this offering. The next capability is field operations, the ability to conduct these, to coordinate these, to participate in these. And in this area, we have a suite of applications that support data capture, coordinating work, navigation, mapping and markup in the field, and a new capability that we're very excited about, Location tracking. Location tracking allows organizations to understand patterns and optimize workflows. It allows workers in the field to share their locations and organizations to know where their staff are. It's a new capability coming in ArcGIS Enterprise 10.7, uh, which is going to be released at the end of March. And there's a lot of business value in it for organizations and staff. It's based on a tracker web viewing application that really works with the tracks uh, that are gathered by Tracker. This is the mobile application that you install on your uh, mobile device and that records your locations and then transmits them to the back office where they can be viewed and made use of by supervisors, by work coordinators, as well as the organization. Uh, there's also the ability to analyze all of that information that's accumulated. And this information can also be used by all of the other applications uh, used in the field. The next capability is spatial analysis and data science. And in this area, ArcGIS, as you know, has comprehensive functionality. ArcGIS allows you to work with many different types of geospatial data and standard tabular data, and it supports spatial analysis, it supports raster analysis. It has spatial machine learning built into it uh, with abilities to do things like interpolation, prediction. Uh, all of this uh, is part of spatial analysis and data science. And in this area, we're really excited about the deep integration that we're achieving uh, with Python notebooks into the platform. And this is with the introduction of hosted Python notebooks, again at ArcGIS 10.7. These notebooks are now items within your WebGIS alongside layers and maps. These notebooks execute inside a new notebook server, uh, which is a component of ArcGIS Enterprise. You can read data into these notebooks and use both ArcPy as well as open science libraries, including libraries like Scikit-Learn and TensorFlow. Uh, you can also uh, write Python notebooks that drive analysis of data uh, through the analysis servers that are part uh, of, of ArcGIS, uh, enabling you to take advantage of distributed computation. 
So this really allows you to blend the power, the analytic capabilities within ArcGIS, as well as the data within ArcGIS with these open data libraries uh, to, to do AI, to do machine learning, and, and uh, take, take full advantage of, of them. In the area of 3D information management, visualization, and analysis, that's really the scope and the capability uh, of ArcGIS uh, that we seek to bring. And this includes a rich information model, which includes all kinds of the features that you're familiar with, uh, points, lines, polygons, as well as 3D objects, as well as point clouds, as well as integrated meshes, and the new BIM layers. In the area of visualization, the focus is on both high fidelity rendering as well as smart mapping and data driven visualization in 3D. And of course, analytics, right? Interactive visual analytics as well as batch analytics that really seek to exploit and understand the information uh, within the data. And you see some of these analyses uh, shown here. The next capability of the geospatial cloud is the ability to work with imagery and remote sensing data sources and manage and disseminate that information, visualize and explore that information, perform analysis, generate map information products from imagery, and of course work with all of the types of content uh, that are there in this space, including all major sensors. And ArcGIS also includes imagery content uh, that is made available to you through the platform. And that includes, uh, for example, NAEP and Landsat and Sentinel. So all of these are part of imagery. And this is also an area where there's been huge advances uh, in the last couple of releases and including at the 10.7 release. Uh, one of the areas that we've been really focusing on is the integration of AI and deep learning. And that includes the ability to treat uh, deep learning models that have been constructed as items uh, within the WebGIS to deploy them into your image servers and take advantage of them uh, in the standard tools for object detection and for image classification. And you're going to see some of that uh, today. The next area is real-time analytics. And this is really about supporting high-velocity data streams uh, for tracking, monitoring, monitoring, and alerting. And in this area, there have been steady advances in performance as well as scalability, uh, beginning at 10.6 with the ability to scale out your GeoEvent server sites. Uh, the 10.7 release includes additional real-time analytic functionality, as well as even more documentation and samples uh, for you to use in building your real-time applications. And the whole pattern here is the, the GeoEvent server uh, working with real-time feeds, uh, the big data store allowing you to archive that information, and the GeoAnalytics server supporting big data analytics against that archived information. This next capability is, is a huge part of GIS, right? It's what allows GIS to be uh, a system of record, as well as a system of insight and a system of engagement. And it's geographic data management. In this area, there's been great focus on advanced models for specific industries, uh, including the utility network. Uh, that's been an area of focus of the la over the last few releases. And uh, ArcGIS Pro 2.3, we just released, and 10.7 is a next big advance uh, in that utility network area. It includes things uh, such as attribute rules, uh, the ability to do batch validation uh, on the server, uh, the ability to do batch calculations, and uh, the full fleshing out uh, of that model uh, that, many of, uh, that many of our utility customers are now adopting. We've also been working on bi-directional integration with the worlds of AEC and BIM, and our partnership with Autodesk has basically really enhanced the work in this area uh, in terms of uh, both the flow of data and the flow of uh, the work that people are doing in terms of, of workflows, both on the GIS and um, the AEC side. 
So then moving on to the products that really deliver these capabilities of the geospatial cloud, these are our core mapping and location products, as well as our GIS products. Our GIS Pro is our comprehensive desktop GIS for professionals, and there's been huge advances in it. Uh, the 2.3 release has been tremendous, you know, with functionality like 3D interpolation uh, coming to the table, uh, all the work that I talked about uh, for utility network management, uh, reports, deep learning integration into Pro, and in terms of the areas that we are focusing on, uh, that includes parcel management and renewed focus on the parcel information model, um, as well as high fidelity rendering. And we're also working on, on voxels uh, to use with you know, atmospheric data, ocean data, um, field data in, in three-dimensional in three space. ArcGIS Online is a mapping and location platform. And some of the things that you have seen uh, roll out uh, in it recently have included user types, uh, the enhancements to the scene viewer, uh, some of which you saw this morning, too, in terms of the fundamentals that support things like filtering and working with BIM models and 3D object layers all uh, out and coming out uh, in, in, in this next release. In addition, we are working on a, a rich agenda for ArcGIS Online, and that includes many of the things that you just saw, uh, including um, imagery uh, that I talked about, including imagery, including the real-time work, including spatial data science through notebooks, all of that you're going to see uh, emerging in, in ArcGIS Online. ArcGIS Enterprise is our comprehensive GIS. And at this release, uh, we have the hosted Python notebooks that I mentioned, as well as a whole set of capabilities detailed. Uh, for example, the ability to have web hooks uh, that let you hook into the events happening on your portal, uh, for example. And in terms of where we are going, um, it's the integration of containerization and microservices into the ArcGIS enterprise architecture, as well as, of course, continued uh, evolution of all of its capabilities. ArcGIS for developers, when we think about it, we really think about it as two distinct offerings, one for mapping and location developers, and then the next for GIS developers who want mapping and location and even more, like you heard. And in that area, basically, we have both the ability to do advanced GIS development as well as extend the geospatial infrastructure uh, that's part of your GIS. Uh, so that includes uh, extending servers, extending pro. Uh, all of that's part of uh, our GIS for developers. Finally, I'd like to talk about the ESRI geospatial, uh, the geo-enabled systems, right? These are the focused geo-enabled systems that are part of the ESRI geospatial cloud. Like I mentioned, uh, they are not GIS, but they often work with your GIS. And the focus here is on the specific workflows uh, that urban planners or city managers, uh, for example, uh, want in their uh, systems. I'm going to walk through these uh, briefly. I'll first call out ArcGIS Insights. Uh, this is about data analytics powered by location. It's for analysts familiar with the look and feel of modern BI and interested in powerful location analytics. It's soon going to be available via its, via its own insights analyst user types that organizations can take advantage of uh, to invite users in who can use uh, insights as the experience to work with the rich ge uh, geospatial data that uh, has been accumulated. ArcGIS Hub is for citizen engagement, and it's a system for collaboration and problem solving. And it includes the ability to manage community identities and groups, uh, to create initiatives that engage with the community, uh, performance dashboards, and the ability to share data. ArcGIS Urban uh, focuses on integrated city planning and design. Uh, it allows urban planners to look at projects in the context of zoning plans 
and to look at what-if scenarios uh, in the context of indicators. ArcGIS Indoors is focused on being a complete indoor mapping and location system, allowing the users uh, to do things like wayfinding and orient themselves indoors, as well as provide organizations uh, the ability uh, to do performance monitoring, as well as space and asset visualization.